the girl a running in a group. She had a high speed motor in a 44 coupe. She had a racing cam and a supercharge. Look at Buddy Hotter, Hotter, and Large. She's a hot rod. She's a hot rod. And we're talking about the different recalls and all that. We got all that done. I just, I would like to tell you about one more thing before I get into my <clears throat> my featured story. Stellantis. Stellantis CEO Carlos Taveros, Taveras, U.S., he said the U.S. plants are building too many vehicles that need rework. What does all this mean? Stellantis CEO Charles Taveras, Carlos Taveras, said shipments of the Ram 1500 and other vehicles have been slowed by problems that, got, that have to be repaired after they come off the assembly line. So they're not even gone to the dealer yet, and they're a mess. Stellantis uh, said the company's, CEO Tavares said the company's U.S. assembly plants are producing too many vehicles before they can be shipped to dealerships, pointing to the Ram 1500 plant in Sterling Heights, Michigan, as one of the main culprits. Hmm. Tavares said the issues have lowered the company's direct run rate, which is a number of vehicles produced that, that get quality certified at the end of the line with no rework. Going back to rectify issues in newly assembled vehicles adds to production costs. Of course, he said that. The direct run rate of some of the art plants, starting with SHAP, Sterling Heights, is not good. And that is something we need to fix with our plant management team. That's Carlos talking about Chrysler. And they're just a mess. And they are. I want to talk about this. Well, did you want to hit, the, hit these other Stellantis stories real quick before we move yeah, on? You, yeah, you Because there's a couple other things. I mean, this is not, this is sort of the, the one, two, three punch here on Stellantis. I think they're, they're So you trouble. talk about their, well, here. So this, this will, uh, the, you're right on target here. So um, Stellantis is now offering... Uh, buyouts of salaried workers. They're saying that uh, last week they reported earnings um, down 48% Yow. for the last six months on net revenues of $92 billion, which was off 14% compared to last year. So they've got those problems. Uh, there's also a story that I just came across that they're suing, Stellantis is, is suing a North Carolina dealer uh, because they're trying to return $180 million worth of fleet vehicles. Fleet vehicles. Um, so, so again, rough times at Stellantis. And I, I think you know, this is like one of those, so goes the manufacturer, the car manufacturer, so goes the economy kind of thing. So well, I got to agree with you They're I, they're not doing well. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm worried about them. I really am. Yeah. Cause you know, that's where I broke my teeth with Chrysler. I cut my teeth with Chrysler. And I, yeah. That's just, but again, I mean, it's like, you, you know, if you, if you, it's it's one of those things where when you're in trouble, what do you? They start cutting costs, right? Which means they make a, a car with more. Cuts. Pro, well, they cut employees. They cut quality in the vehicle. They cut quality. People hear about the quality. They start hearing about recalls. They're less likely to buy the car, which means they're selling less cars. It's a spiral. It's just, yeah, it's a it's a it's a closed and loop. It's a closed loop, and hopefully and uh, the not government's good. not going to bail them out. But they no, already did, I think. It's, it's they, not good. Want, you can look for either Stellantis to sell off Chrysler products. Or because they have other vehicles, yeah. Or they got Fiat and something else, but or just try and close everything up. And I don't think Chrysler can do that. That's too many people in this country that apply. Well, when you there. you talk about how the the big three. I mean, it, you know, I think there's got to be a lot of shakeout here. You well, know, it's, it's going to be two and a half. Now. Right. I mean, that's what I'm saying is that you know we we know Tesla's doing doing okay, not as great as he was before, but I mean even. You know, going back to Rivian, all these guys are in trouble right now. Oh yeah, they're all you in trouble. You got too many players and too small of a market. Exactly. No many, not too many sales because of a glut of electric vehicles that nobody and is buying. High interest rates and oh, any number of other things. interest rates. So I mean, honestly, even looking at it, you have to assume that nothing's changing for at least the rest of this year. Oh, a car loan is seven or eight percent. A commercial lending yeah. is ten or eleven percent if you qualify. These are Jimmy Carter numbers. We were way back. Um, th there was. Those? There was another Fed meeting this week that, again, no rate cuts in the future. So, I mean, that, you know, good for the markets, bad for car sales. So anybody well, that's sitting there waiting, like, is, you know, to buy a house or a car, no no rate cuts. Things are not looking 
you know, not not looking good for the rest of this year. Now, I knew people that lost their houses when Carter was in because the interest rate was sixteen percent. Yeah, sixteen percent. They took out a loan a year a year and a half later. They couldn't pay to make the payments anymore. They couldn't, or they, it was either that, or they couldn't buy ham and, and bread. Yeah, you have a and, house, but nothing to put in it, kind of. Yeah, thing. yeah, that's exactly right. So anyway, this is this is economy that's is killing it, but it's it's definitely got their own problems. Stellantis has brought a lot of things on themselves too. So, all right, Chuck, have you ever been up at night and watched the television and see the ad for your extended warranty on your car? Well, I work in an industry where I see a lot of those commercials, well, I bet you and I do. wonder a lot about the the quality of those products and uh, you know the satisfaction of their consumers. Well, back in the '80s and '90s, I had customers ask me, "Should I buy an extended warranty?" And I said, "The only extended warranty that you should buy should be from the dealer. In other words, you buy a Ford extended warranty from Ford, GM." Cheap. Saying when you're buying it new or even used, or? buying it new or used. Okay. If they offer it for the used cars, a lot of a lot of the good uh, companies won't offer them for used cars, but they offer you the extended warranty that goes be above and beyond the three years, thirty six thousand miles. And that you know, and I keep getting notices in the mail. You want to buy an extended warranty for your Ford? Your Ford, and I, I haven't. I only got ten thousand miles on. I don't think I better buy one now. But the headline in this week, and I got to tell you. We are in a, a, a full dis, full disclosure. My shop is a, a premium Car Shield repair center. Car Shield American Auto Shield to pay ten million in settlement on false advertising claims. I knew this was coming. They're not the only ones. This is just the first one, and they're the biggest. The settlement money will get refunded to customers of the vehicle service contract retailer. The deal is, and I, and it's ugly. American Auto Shield, the company that administers vehicle service contracts for CarShield, also is included in the complaint and proposed order filed on July 21st in U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Missouri. The FTC said the companies use celebrity endorsers such as Ice-T, they did, and basketball player Allen Iverson, they did, and that the endorsers allegedly made false statements in ads and or have not used the service. They, they don't need it. They got money. The FTC said the contracts also did not cover all repairs as stated to in advertisements. You should see how bad it is when they, when they call in. Instead of delivering the peace of mind promised by its advertisements, CarShield left many consumers with a financial headache. Samuel Levine, director of the FTC's Bureau of Consumer Protection, said in a statement. Worse still, CarShield used trusted personalities to deliver its empty promises. The FTC will hold advertisers accountable for using false or deceptive claims to, to exploit consumers' financial anxieties. And they did, too. Uh, after a judge signs the order, the companies will have seven days to pay the settlement fine, the $10 million. I gotta tell you, Chuck, this all, I gotta, let me just tell you, I have people ask me every day, which of these should I buy? And I said, I wouldn't buy any of them, but I, I, I have the least trouble with car shield. And I get them, I get them calling me from all different kinds. I'll, I won't even use any other names because I don't have any proof on them, but this is a sheet this came out of the automotive news. This is gospel. This is this is the God's whole. This is the car holy Bible. And they they'll tell you. I get people to come in, and they purpose and they think or they they say to me, I need I need brakes and shocks and a belts and da da da. Well, and I have car shield. They say they don't cover any of that. Oh yes, they do. They told me they right. Did. So that that so that that becomes the issue is that they basically say they cover all these things. You won't ever have a repair bill. I mean, I think they say in the commercial, you won't have a repair bill, right? Exactly. And they say that. And what you're saying, though, is that these are normal normal wear items they don't cover. No, they won't cover that. So it, I look at this sort of like medical insurance or even homeowner's insurance or something like that where it's catastrophic. It's not, you know, and they say, well, if you need a new engine or something like that, I can't imagine what that would look like. But so a lot of these companies, I assume, make their money on the idea of negotiating better rates with you 
maybe negotiating, you know, cheaper parts or something. Oh, they, they have to find their way to I, make their money I back. I get beat up on regular. And what they say is, if you have to charge the customer the difference, you go right ahead. Okay. So whatever they're covering, the only thing they don't bother me on is, is warranty labor rate. But parts, they, they keep wanting to send me these junky parts. And I tell them, no, that's part of my business too. I give them the price. They'll say, well, we'll pay this much for that part, this much for that part. They'll only pay so much. Okay, well, I'll charge the customer the rest. Right. How about brake shock? No, that, none of that's covered. But this guy was told they were. Oh, no, he wasn't. Oh, yes, he was. <laughs> I know this guy. He's not an idiot. Right. And, he, and he's not a liar. And But I have had, oh, and I have another company. I won't use their name, but I will tell you they're, one of their taglines in their ad is never pay for another car bill. Right. They're going to cover oil changes, and they're going to cover all this stuff. I had, them all, I had that one in my shop last week, and I called on it. They, they, that guy wanted new brakes put in. Just, they don't cover brakes. Well, how can they cover oil changes if they don't cover brakes? You know what I'm saying? Come on. These guys, are, these people, are being lied to. And you know who they take advantage of? The people with the money that can't afford it. Right. They're paying, some of them pay 100 bucks a week. One, was, one guy was paying 90 bucks a week for this coverage because he had an old car with a lot of miles. But they weren't covering nothing. Engine, transmission, and rear end. That you can get covered. And you gotta, but they, won't, they will only do it a certain way. They'll only pay a certain price for that. And you have to pay the balance to your repair shop. And it's not just me that does it. Everywhere that goes on these things charges the balance to the customer. And plus you have a deductible. Some are 100, some are 250. These people are, are they, they got caught, okay? They finally got caught. I knew this was coming. I could smell it. And I told Ronnie, that my manager there, I said, you know what? We're going to hear about this before long because these people are not right. This is not fair and it's not right. And you can't take people's money under the premise that you're covering their car and you're not. Well, I think this just falls under that. I mean, again, it's the, the uh, typical advice that you would give somebody is if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is, right? Oh, absolutely. And it's, I had that one poor old guy in there the other day. He had he had the car shield or whatever he had, and, and he said, well, you know, I'm covered bumper to bumper. I said, oh, no, you're not. I'll, you know what? I will do this. You want to wait? And you can sit there. It takes a while, but I will call it in. To them you can go online and do it or you can call it in i said instead of going online i'll call it in and i'll let you talk to whoever you want to talk to about why they're not covering this or that on your car you got a problem with your window it's three or four hundred dollars to fix your window the window regulator that's not covered that's not covered they there's so many different things that they just don't and they're not all the same some of them don't cover different things but they don't cover what they tell you they're covering. People are paying so much money a, a month for these extended warranties, and they're getting, they're getting laid away. Well, you have to assume that it was basically you're on the phone with somebody who makes money off selling you on it, oh, and absolutely. then somewhere buried in the fine print, there's probably 200 pages of fine print to tell you what they don't. And, and you, maybe you glanced at it, maybe you read it, maybe you didn't. Chances are you didn't. Well, it's like reverse telemarketing. You call into them and they lie to you instead of them calling you and lying to you. And I get, I get all worked up over this thing, but I, I, I know I, I called this. I said, it's going to happen. People are going to, they're up in arms. Some of them are going to the Better Business Bureau and, Bureau and complaining that they were told that this is covered. This is all covered and it's not. It's not, and it's just it's just not fair, and they take advantage of the people that are, are less able to afford the repairs than anybody else. So they figure if they pay, if they spend three hundred dollars a month or four hundred dollars a month, that's just a monthly payment, but they won't have to pay thousands of dollars for extra stuff. When I start doing front end work on your Chevy or I start doing other work, the engine on the engine uh, repair on a Ford, you're in the thousands. You're up there. You're in the thousands right off the bat. It's insane. Well, I got to charge to, to get the parts, actually, to fix them. But this whole thing, they want, and if they do cover something, they're only going to cover part of it. 
They're not going to cover all of it. If I don't, if I don't let them send me parts that are either used or just cheap, if I don't let, the, if I don't let them, they're only going to pay. If I, they, I tell them it takes two hours to do this, according to my book. They say, well, we got 1.7 here, so you're only getting this much. So okay, just tell me what what the bottom line is. What are you going to pay for? Then I can deduct it from my estimate, and that's what the customer has to pay plus his deductible. And <laughs> They have been lying through their teeth to these people. That's the point I want to make. They're lying. They're absolutely telling you things that make no sense. If you think about it, you should have more sense than to think that somebody's going to cover your brakes on a warranty when it's not defective, it's just worn out. They're not going to cover a belt that's worn out. They're not going to pay for your air filter either, I'll tell you right now. So, you know what, it's just a... I don't know, it's just a sad, sad turn of events that something that could be good is not. And I, again, I'll say the only thing I buy, I would buy for extended warranty would have to come from the dealer, it would have to come from the manufacturer. I want them to stand behind it. And you can bet if you got a big car with big, big dollar items and a lot of, uh, tra uh, a lot of problems, Ford is not going to give you the, they're not going to, they're not going to write you up. They're not going to give you a, a car that they know they're going to have to pay out on right away. They're not going to. They're not going to sign you up. They're not going to let you do that. They want you to sign up. Like I get notices all the time on my 2020. It's four years old now, but I get I was getting notices a year after I bought it. Hey, your warranty's about to expire. You want to buy this? No, no, I don't. I. The extended warranty is not an extended warranty. It's a pay plan, and it can save you some money. Don't get me wrong. It can save you some money, but it's not going to save you everything it says it's going to save you. And if some things are just not going to be covered, period. And that didn't save you anything, now did it? If it's something that they covered, but they're only going to cover this much, if the bill is $300 and they're only going to cover $150, that, that $50 goes on with your deductible. That's just how they operate. And buying one of those is buyer beware, I'm telling you right now. And I didn't, the car shield was the one I had the least problems with. That's why I, I signed up to be one of their installers, and that was a, a huge mistake now that I see this. I don't want that reputation.